this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to talk about some of the updates in Pine that have been introduced lately, uh, as well as uh, one of the trading view updates as far as indicators are concerned. There's been quite a few updates lately. And for those of you watching on YouTube, I just want to let you all know that I am actually posting this as an idea on TradingView first. So if you haven't already, please follow me on TradingView so you can get uh, notifications on this stuff sooner because I've got to edit the video before I upload it to YouTube. So that has the fancy intros and outros and stuff. So of course, like the video and subscribe there as well. But we're going to be starting off, we're going to try these ideas on TradingView first and then uploading them later onto YouTube to see how this kind of actually works uh, for big bits. But for now, we're going to go ahead and get started on some of these updates. Now, some of the most important parts, uh, we'll just cover all the updates really quick and then we'll go back and we'll talk about how to actually use some of those. Now, there is a new function for line.getPrice. It allows you to get the price of any particular point on the line. And then, of course, there are new label styles, which allows different directions for your labels. Uh, basically, just allows you to go off at a diagonal now and left and right as opposed to just above and below. And there are also tool tips now for labels. Then one of the big things that uh, I think a lot of people are excited about are the candlestick patterns are available now as a built-in script. It has its own section and everything. So that's great to see. And there's also some information here on the base currency. So if you're working with a script and you need to know the base currency, like if you're working with Forex or like a crypto trading pair, you'll be able to see the base currency that you're working with. And of course the quote currency would be USD in this example, then your base would be EUR. Now they also have added a time zone parameter for the time itself okay uh usually it says in the past that it has always returned the exchanges time and now you can actually specify the time zone and this is just uh, an example of the reference and we'll go back and talk about this but i really want to focus on showing you all how to use line.getPrice and then also how to use these new labels this one's a lot easier than line.getPrice and i'll show you an example of how we're going to use these together uh, and hopefully everybody can learn a little bit. So first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to define uh, basically what type of line I wanna create on the chart. And then I'm going to try to find the price in the middle of that. And I'm gonna plot this nice little label here that shows where the midpoint price is. So to do this, first, what we're gonna do is we are going to create a look back period for the high where we're going to go back and we're going to look for the highest high value in this in this look back period so we're going to go back up to 25 candles look for the highest high and it's going to start the line there then we're only going to look back 10 candles for the lowest low we'll find our lowest low in the most recent 10 candles here you can see it's drawing its line from the highest high to the lowest low within its respective look back periods and then it's calculating where the midpoint is as far as the number of bars back from the current bar. And then it is actually printing the label that many bars back at the price of the line there so that you can actually see the label is pointing to that particular spot on the line. So I'm gonna walk through the code here. I've already completed the code. And if you're curious about Pine script and stuff, I have plenty of scripts on that on my profile. Uh, plenty of videos as well. So you can always check out all of those resources, but we're gonna just go over the code kind of line by line, just talk about what's going on. And then you can see where we're actually using some of these new features in just a moment. So the first line that isn't really an input here, um, our look back periods, our inputs, we can change those and play around with those in just a little bit. But for now, the first thing you can do is be plotting your line. And this is just going to plot a line with default values. Uh, it's going to create the line at the current bar index from the high at the current bar index to the low. And it's going to be a white line. And we don't really want that. We want to actually set our X and Y of the first plot or the first point in the line. And we're going to set our X and Y in the second point of the line as well. And to do that, we are going to look back for the number of bars back for the highest high. And to do that, we use highest bars function. This gives you the total number of bars back from the current bar that the highest value 
uh, of the data you specify occurs within that period. It's kind of confusing, but it's all it's saying is we're going to look back 25 candles. We're going to look for the highest value of all the highs. And then we're going to say how many bars back that was from the current one. That's all it does. And that's going to be our X value. Our Y value is going to be the highest high value there. So our X was the number of bars back. Our Y value is the highest high. Now we do the same thing for the lowest low within the look back period. It has its own respective lowest bar function. So that'll tell us how many bars back to plot our X2. And then our Y2 is going to be that lowest value within that 10 period look back for the lows. So now we have our X and Y1 and our X and Y2. So we, now we can plot our line. We have a wonderful line here, but what we really need to do now is we need to determine where the middle of this line is so that we can place the label. And in order to do this, we have to calculate how far back our first set of bars are. Uh, well, just either set really. And then we need to add those up and get the average. And of course this will have to round because there is no half bar or quarter bar. It's gonna have to be rounded essentially to an integer. And to do this, we use the highest bars function again. And ideally, if you wanted to minimize code, you would actually kind of save this as a variable and reuse it here and here. But for now, we're just gonna keep it like this because this is a negative number here. We are going to calculate the highest bars back plus the lowest bars back. And that is actually incorrect. My apologies. So I actually caught a bug on the fly. So how about that? All right, so now we are looking for our lowest bars back and we are using our low and our low look back. So we're looking back, this is what, like eight bars back and that's you know like 19 or 20. We add those up, divide them by two. It gives us about you know 15 or 16 bars back. We're now at our midpoint line. Uh, we know where our midpoint is on the line, how many bars back that is. So now we have to know the Y value. So our bars, the midpoint bars that we just calculated, that is the X value of where we're gonna place our label. We need the Y value, which is gonna be the line price. So in order to get it right on the line, we have to know the price that's gonna occur on this line on that bar. And in order to do that, we use the new line.getPrice function. And we specify that we are using our line that we plotted on the chart. And then we tell it the bar index is going to be the midpoint bars. So we're getting the price of the line that many bars back, which is our midpoint. So it's looking for our price on the line here. And now we have our X, which is our midpoint bars, and our Y, which is our line price at the midpoint. So we have our X and Y for our label now. So that is... Uh, a long way to go about showing you how to find the uh, price, but it's also pairing it with the label here. You can see it actually uses a nice uh, diagonal style here. It is using the label upper, <laughs> label upper right, and that just essentially means from the label, the little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, a little pointy part goes up and to the right. And if you change this at any of those directions, you got to keep in mind the direction you're telling it upper right is the direction it's going to point. So if it said lower left, then the label would be up here and it would be pointing down to the lower left. So that's something to keep in mind. And that is about it. We've set our label on here. Uh, we've created the default label and then we plotted it, of course, at that bar index for the midpoint bars at that price. I already said that, but I kind of forgot to show you on the code itself where that actually was. Now, that that pretty much handles the two major points that I wanted to show you. And just to show you how you can actually do this when you're working with your code, you can actually adjust your values on your lookbacks here. And now it'll redraw the line and now you have a new midpoint. So it's calculating all of this stuff for us. Let's go back 150. That didn't change anything. Let's go back. Uh, wow, that's too much. Let's go back 500. Okay, that is way too many bars back. Let's just do 100 and 10. Oh, it's the same thing. 
uh, as what we had earlier, but you can see how it's kind of recalculating uh, over time there. Now, we've gotten those two functions done. I did want to talk a little bit more about this. And this is on the Pine Coders Twitter account. They post these updates, and not all of these are going to be shown on the trading view updates so if you haven't followed them on twitter i recommend it i follow them on twitter myself just to see these things uh, because i like to stay up to date on what's going on what's available and i like to make these videos for you all so i follow them personally but if you want to see these updates and know what you're capable of doing as well then i, I highly recommend you follow them as well but you can see there's a tooltip now for your labels so now you don't have to take up a ton of screen space to show all this information if you just want to use a label to highlight here that this h has occurred then you can also give more detail uh, using the tooltip about what that is now this is a pretty long tooltip in my opinion um, but in the use case here it makes a lot of sense uh, the other thing and this one uh, is really awesome the candlestick patterns i'll actually go ahead and show you this we can minimize that code now and i can actually show you when you go to pull up indicators click on candlestick patterns and it gives you all these built-in candlestick patterns one of my favorite ones to look for are dojis so i'll add that to the chart you see there's a doji here it uses that wonderful tooltip feature to give you a bunch of information about what a doji is and now it also shows you where it is on the chart. So you can see there's two dojis in a row there, one there, one there. So it's actually really nice. Let's also add in a bullish engulfing because I want to see when we have bullish engulfing candles. So there's a bullish engulfing candle. There's one, there's one, there's one. So it makes it really easy to spot when there are these different candlestick patterns. And the great thing about these is you can actually look at the source code and you can see how it's actually done. So you can figure out if you want to use this in your own scripts, how you can do that as well. Now, going on beyond that, we've talked about the base currency. This one's super simple. And then we also talked about the time zones for the return time uh, based on the exchanges. But really, the main thing you need to know is when there are updates like this, they often link to the reference manual, the PineScript reference. And I usually just Google PineScript reference manual and I also have it bookmarked, but you can go here and you can get information on the new stuff as they add it into the documentation, like line.getPrice. That function is already in here, shows you how to actually do it with a nice little example as well. So if you're wanting to see how to do this stuff, check out the PineScript reference manual. And if you're wanting to keep up to date, of course, follow Pine Coders on Twitter. That's what I do. And they keep me pretty up to date on what's going on as far as all the new additions to Pine. But that will do it for this video. I hope those of you on TradingView who are watching me for the first time have enjoyed it and can follow me on TradingView. Check out some of the scripts I've done that uh, I've already done to help people learn about using PineScript. I've done quite a few tutorials. And for those of you who are watching this on YouTube later after the TradingView video has been posted, uh, I would appreciate it if you could like the video as well. And also, while you're down there liking the video, please subscribe as well. I really appreciate that. But I believe that will be it for this particular video. I really appreciate all of you watching. Have a great day.